Okay, for 3a it just says solve, and, and you can use any method you want on this. Okay, so here's another one where we have something in parentheses with a square in it. So anytime you see that sort of thing, you want to use the square root property in order to, to solve that. Again, you could expand it all out, multiply it all out, combine it together, and then use either factoring or quadratic, but in this form it's much easier to do it by the square root principle. So let's go ahead and do it that way. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add 9 to both sides. So when we do that, we get 9 equals 2x minus 3 squared. You now want to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to do square root of 9 and square root of 2x minus 3, and we're squaring that. Don't forget about the plus or minus out there in front of the square root of 9. This becomes plus or minus 3 this time, and then this is going to be just 2x minus 3. So if this ends up being a square root, then you can kind of do what I did in, uh, where you can just have a number plus or minus the square root. So we've seen that before. Now, if it's a whole number like this, you do want to go ahead and get the actual numerical answers for each one. So I do want to simplify that all the way down to get the answer. What you would do is you're going to take 2x minus 3 equals positive 3, 2x minus 3 equals negative 3, because there are two numbers there, plus or minus 3. We're going to now solve both of those for x. So if we add 3 to both sides, 2x is going to equal 6. So we get x is equal to 3 is one of our answers. The other one, if we add 3 to both sides, we actually get a 0 on the side here. Now, you're dividing both sides by 2, so it's not going to be undefined. You're not dividing by 0 in this case. You're dividing both sides by 2. So because you're doing that, you're going to get 0 for your answer. So for this one, the two answers would be 0 and 3.